What's up you guys, Kristen Jansen here, online fitness coach, content creator, and competitive powerlifter and bodybuilder. Thank you guys so much for tuning back into my channel. Today I want to discuss with you guys some different techniques that you can utilize to maintain spinal hygiene in order to maintain a healthy back. I've been doing things that they told me I should never do. I've been doing things that they told me I could never do now. Never do, I could never do. As you guys know, I'm following Stuart McGill's program from the book called The Back Mechanic. If I haven't said it enough, I will say it one more time. If you guys are experiencing any back pain or any issues, or you're a competitive power lifter and you haven't injured your back, I still highly recommend that you get this book. Check it out, give it a read. It is extremely beneficial, very, very helpful for maintaining a healthy back. So in last week's episode, we discussed how you can actually assess your back pain. Now that you have finally assessed your back pain, it's time to take the appropriate measures. Basically, this is just like any type of other hygiene is where you maintain the upkeep of your back. So there are certain things that you can do throughout the day that seem to be kind of common sense, but they might not be common practice, and that is just basic movements. For example, when you're going to put on your shoes, you want to make sure that you are maintaining a neutral spine. If you were bent over in an awkward position, or if you go to pick something up, you always want to ensure that your core is in engaged and that your spine is neutral basically the entire time throughout the entire range of motion. It's very difficult if you've been developing habits where you are bending over inappropriately, even though it might not seem to make a difference over time, believe me, it does. Even if you were going to sit down on the toilet, go to sit down on a chair, you always want to try to brace your core. I pretend like I visualize that I'm going into a squat. So how would you brace when you come down into a squat? You brace your abdominal wall, squeeze your glutes and you descend using your legs, not your back. So same principles should apply when you're going to sit down anywhere. Next, if you go to pick up something, so if you go to pick up your gym bag, groceries on the floor, a lot of us are doing this with a hunched over back. This is something that we wanna to try to avoid. Again, even though that grocery bag may not be super heavy where you don't need to focus on engaging your core, these are poor habits that you're developing over time which do transfer over into lifting. For me, my trigger if I go down to bend to pick something up, I always try to pretend that I'm doing a deadlift. So what do you do for a deadlift? Again, you're bracing your abdominal wall, you're focusing on hinging your hips back, and you're not using your back to pick that item up. So same thing should apply throughout your basic daily movements. You want to focus on, on a daily basis, and believe me, it is tough thinking about it, it is tough trying to focus on it, but over time, if you are aware of it, it does become a habit. So don't be lazy, make that time. If you have to put triggers in your phone that go off every hour, say, hey, are you bracing your abdominal wall? <laughs> hey, are you making sure that you engage your core when you pick something up? Are you engaging your core properly when you go to sit down? and not using your back. So it's little things like that. They're gonna make a big difference in the future. Okay, next I'm gonna show you my daily routine. It's called the McGill Big Three. And unfortunately, it's not the squat, bench, and deadlift anymore. We are actually gonna be doing bird dogs, side planks, and curl ups. These are the new big three that everybody should be doing to help maintain and increase spinal hygiene. Before I get into the big three, I kind of just loosen up my back by doing some cat camels. When you are doing these, you want to make sure that your arms are completely stable and bracing your core breathing in when you curl up and then breathing out when you extend your back. So for this, I am doing two sets of eight with 30 second rests in between. All right, so the first one out of the big three is the bird dog. So this exercise targets your back and it also targets your hip extenders as well. It just basically teaches the discipline of using proper hip and shoulder motion while maintaining a stable spine. So McGill is just saying here, that based on his research, it has shown that employing the bird dog exercise spares the spine from high compressive loads and enables stable patterns of muscle activity. It challenges both lumbar and thoracic positions of multiple major back muscles. So this exercise is also a major contributor 
in desensitizing back pain and I noticed that tremendously. Like I said before, my back can be a little bit stiff in the mornings. It normally feels pretty good. It's at its worst in its evenings right now. I do this typically in the mornings and right before bed and instantly I just notice that my back pain is almost completely gone after doing this exercise. So I will do three sets here. The first set is a set of six for 10 second holds on both sides and then after my set of six, take about a 30 second rest. Then I do four reps of 10 second holds, take another 30 second rest, and then I do two reps of 10 second holds. It does take some time, it does take some patience, it is boring as hell, but you know what, if you put a podcast on, really make sure that you are paying attention to your form and technique here. Okay, the next exercise out of the big three is the side planks. Side planks is something that I haven't really focused too much on in the past, so I am still progressing with this. As you can see, I have one knee down and one foot up. So for this, I was at a point where I was first starting out where I had both knees down, so I am just progressing with it because I do notice a little bit of tension in my lower back. I don't want to overdo it by being up on both of my feet, so that's why I'm just taking it easy with this right now. So for this one, I'm applying the same rep scheme. And the last one, this one is definitely my favorite, are the curl ups. So again, same progression when it comes to the rep scheme. So the curl ups replicates the standard abdominal crunch, but it keeps the spine neutral where Whereas if you do a sit up, it's very difficult to maintain a neutral spine. And when you have a back injury, maintaining a neutral spine obviously is extremely important just because you don't want to find that pain again. So with the curl ups on the leg that you're extending out, you're actually going to have your hand underneath your lumbar that helps maintain spine neutrality throughout the range of motion. As you perform the exercise, you're going to elevate your elbows off the floor, keep your hand under your lumbar and you want to again maintain a neutral spine. So you're going to slightly lift your head and shoulders off the floor. As your neck, shoulders and elbow come off the floor, so does your heel and you're just going to ensure that you're stiff your abdominals as you hold for 10 seconds. So this one is my favorite. I definitely try to ensure every day, twice a day that I am performing this regimen. There's been a couple of days where I just don't have the time. I will make sure I do the curl ups. That's only because for me, I find that that exercise relieves my back pain the most. So that's the McGill big three. Give them a try. Even if you don't have back pain, this is something that you should try to implement into your day. You don't have to do it twice a day, but maybe try once a day it honestly just takes 20 minutes 30 minutes at most and I think that if you do that you will find it if you are already efficient with your squat bench and deadlift it's just gonna help that much more so take care of that back my friend that's going to conclude today's video. I hope you guys found it helpful. If you did, please make sure you guys comment down below, subscribe if you haven't already, and like the video. Thanks you guys for watching, and I will see you in the next one.